I'm going to present an experiment called the Crystal Forest. And this is an experiment that I have my students actually in my second year or advanced chemistry class do when we're examining crystal solids and their crystalline structures. Now, there is a kit available, so I'm going to show you the components of that kit, but it is also possible to acquire other ways of doing this. But the beauty of the kit is that you produce a tree as opposed to just drawing, growing the particular kind of crystals. So, what you have is uh, essentially some blotter paper, which has the trees from which you can cut this out. And what I have done is cut out two of the trees. One has a slit for you to cut in the bottom, one in the top. And then what you do is that you fit these together to make your three-dimensional tree. And that tree should be able to stand up then. Now, you can do the crystal forest with just this tree and the solution, which I will show you momentarily. But if you want to decorate it, you can also add food coloring. And what you would do in that case would be to take a drop of food coloring and just place it on the tip of each of the points of the tree. And you can do it with different colors. You can do it on all the tips or some of the tips. Your choice as far as that goes. But what do you do with this tree then? What we're going to do is really grow sodium chloride crystals. And so what we need is a saturated solution of sodium chloride. But the solution contains more than the sodium chloride. It contains some ferrocyanide ions, and it contains also some ammonia. Now, the solution itself looks really strange. And in fact, there's generally salt that will be sitting at the bottom of your solution because it is a saturated solution. So when you make up this solution, you really want to swirl it around before you actually pour some out. And I've already taken care of that, and I've measured out 30 milliliters of my solution. And what you do is you pour the solution into a weighing pan. And then you set your tree in there. Now, it obviously isn't going to grow instantly. So what I'm going to show you are a variety of trees that I've prepared over the last few days and uh, explain to you what exactly I have done to these trees. Now, the first tree here actually has had some food coloring on it. So you get to see a little bit how that develops. And this tree was set up a, a matter of a few hours ago. So that gives you an idea of how quickly this grows. Now, in order for these crystals to grow, the liquid has to evaporate. So I will warn you that if you're in an extremely humid climate or if your laboratory is not particularly dry, that uh, the growth will be impeded. But if you're in a nice dry room, then the crystal growth is going to be enhanced. Now, the next one that we're examining here obviously has had blue food coloring put on it, and this has gone for a couple of more days. The one over here has just been the tree in the solution with no additional food coloring put on the tips. And then the ones here that are towards the back uh, this one has had different colors of food coloring. That is, I used four different colors, and some tend to predominate more than others. But this actually had red, blue, green, and yellow. And then this one back here is just one that has been going with just the actual solution for a greater length of time. Now, of course, why do these salt crystals grow in this way? What's going on with this? So we're going to go over to the easel and examine our salt crystals and how they form what are known as dendritic crystals in the case of our crystal forest. Now, sodium chloride crystals ordinarily will form in a cubic shape. But what happens when you add the ferrocyanide in the presence of some blue in the presence of some ammonia is that as the crystal starts to form the ferrocyanide ion here adheres 
And what happens is that it absorbs on the crystal, and so the crystal starts growing out at the corners. And what we get is a structure that sometimes is referred to as star-like. So dendritic salt is not cubes, it's star-like. And so we get a really very pretty design on our crystal forest here. But it's interesting to note that because of that shape, that if salt were to have that star-like shape, it wouldn't cling together as does salt cubes. So let's go back over now and look at, interestingly enough, a label here. And this label is from a, still a different brand of salt called Wegmans iodized salt. And the thing that I want to focus on is that it mentions in here that we have prussiate. And prussiate is another name for that ferrocyanide. In fact, it sounds a lot, of, a lot less harmless, doesn't it? Uh, or less harmful, rather. And so it's listed in here as an anti-caking agent, because if the crystals form and they're star-like, then they're not going to cling together. Now, sometimes your students have also been to uh, museum stores, and they have found things called the magic tree. And uh, if you look at the, you see the picture here, it looks much like the crystal forest that we had. And on the back here, it actually has little cutout trees, and they already have been impregnated with some uh, different colors of food coloring. And it tells you that how you can go about doing this using chemicals that you can buy at the grocery store. It's also possible to do this on pieces of sponge, or many, many decades ago, people did this with pieces of coal and grew their own crystal gardens. So this is a pretty spectacular way to look at salt crystals. And if you don't talk about different kinds of crystalline forms in your class, uh, growing crystals is just an interesting uh, kind of an experiment, and this is with a, a slightly different twist, and uh, we get some pretty spectacular results. Now, I will mention that these are pretty fragile, so it's not like you can take it home with you after you grow one at school. In fact, moving it from place to place, the crystals do tend to break off. But when they're just sitting there, they're pretty spectacular to look at, and so uh, it's a very nice way to grow crystals and get a very beautiful product at the end.